Since ancient times, humans have dreamed of personal flight. Today, technology is finally catching up. In this documentary, we explore jetpacks, manned drones, air bikes, and other innovations making solo flight a reality. Daily Amazement will break down the tech, the cost, who's building them, and when you might be flying one yourself. The dream of human flight goes back centuries. One of the earliest recorded concepts came from Leonardo da Vinci, who in the late 1400s sketched out a series of flying machines, including the famous ornithopter, a winged contraption meant to mimic the flapping motion of birds. Though he never built these machines, his designs inspired generations of inventors who tried to lift humans into the sky using everything from steam engines to compressed air. The first real attempts at manned flight came in the 20th century with the development of gliders and early jetpacks. In the 1960s, Bell Aerosystems created a working rocket belt for the U.S. military, which allowed a man to fly for about 20 seconds. Despite its limitations, this invention captured the public imagination and appeared in movies and live demonstrations. But with high fuel consumption and little control, it never moved beyond the prototype phase. From Da Vinci's ink drawings to Cold War era rocket packs, personal flight has always teetered between fantasy and function. Now, with advanced materials, computer stabilization, and compact power systems, it's no longer just a dream. It's an industry. Jetpacks use mini jet engines to create lift, with pilots steering by adjusting thrust direction. Jet suits add arm mounted turbines for greater control. Jetpack Aviation's JB series can hit 120 miles per hour and fly for 8 to 10 minutes, but cost over $300,000. Gravity Industries' jet suit is even more agile and has been tested in emergency services in the UK, reaching victims in 90 seconds versus 25 minutes on foot. These suits are controlled with the body itself, allowing for incredibly nimble movement and short-distance emergency responses in challenging terrain. Jet suits are also being tested for military applications. In high-risk or mountainous regions, a jet suit could allow a soldier or medic to bypass terrain and reach objectives in record time. While flight time is short, the sheer speed and flexibility opens the door for special operations or tactical reconnaissance. Manned drones, or EVTOLs, lift with multiple electric rotors. They're like oversized drones you can sit in. The Jetson 1, a single-seat electric flyer, sells for around $100,000 and needs no pilot license in the U.S. It flies for 20 minutes at speeds up to 63 miles per hour. Chinese company Ehang's EH216 is fully autonomous, seats two, and is already certified for commercial use in China. It's aimed at urban transport, priced around $350,000. Other innovators like Pivotal's Helix and Opener's Blackfly offer recreational use personal aircraft under ultralight rules. These crafts are generally quieter and rely on redundant rotors for safety, but limited by battery life and regulatory restrictions. Future designs are expected to include AI-driven autopilot and traffic management systems, allowing EVTOLs to operate in busy city skies without human input. Combined with rooftop landing pads and integration with rideshare apps, they could make sky taxis a reality by the early 2030s. Hover bikes combine motorcycle design with drone or jet tech to lift off. Japan's AR Winds makes the X Turismo, a hybrid gas electric bike with 40 minute range and a $777,000 price tag. They plan a $50,000 version by 2025. Jetpack Aviation's Speeder uses turbines and can hit 150 miles per hour. It's aimed at both recreation and military med evac with a base price of $380,000. The Dubai police famously tested Hoversurf's Scorpion hoverbike, though open-rotor designs raise safety concerns. 
There's growing interest in using hover bikes for cargo delivery in remote areas or disaster zones. With cargo pods replacing a rider, these bikes can transport first aid, food, or communications gear to places otherwise inaccessible. Enter the Volinot, one of the newest and sleekest air bikes on the scene. Designed for maximum stability and ease of control, it features four large ducted fans and a carbon fiber frame. With a seated rider position and advanced gyroscopic balancing, it's closer to a flying scooter than a full motorcycle. The Volinot offers an estimated top speed of 50 miles per hour and a flight time of 15 to 20 minutes on a full charge. It's fully electric, has built-in flight assistance software, and requires minimal piloting skill thanks to its fly-by-wire controls. Designed with urban use in mind, the Volinot could serve commuters and couriers alike. Expected to be priced around $85,000 when it launches commercially, it's targeting both hobbyists and professionals. Volinot is also exploring shared use models. Think electric air bike rental platforms at resorts, events, or adventure parks. Early testers say the ride feels effortless, like floating forward on a cushion of air. Eve Rossi's Jetman Wing lets pilots soar like powered gliders. The team even achieved vertical takeoff in 2020. Meanwhile, Frankie Zapata's Flyboard Air, essentially a jet-powered hoverboard, crossed the English Channel at 106 miles per hour. These aren't consumer-ready, but they show what's possible when tech pushes limits. We're also seeing new prototypes emerge. Solar-powered gliders, electrically enhanced wingsuits, and one-man copters controlled by smartphone apps. Some use AI to balance and fly themselves. Others aim to fold up like a large suitcase. These machines are expensive, noisy, and often require training, but they're improving fast. Use cases include emergency response, scenic tours, military insertions, and commuting above traffic. With falling costs, better batteries, and smarter controls, personal flying could move from elite novelty to accessible reality. The Volinot and Jetson 1 are just early signs of what's to come. By the 2030s, we might see short hop flying vehicles buzzing over suburbs or air lanes opening above cities. Regulation and infrastructure remain key hurdles, but technology is racing ahead. New training methods, including VR flight schools and AI-guided onboarding, are being developed to help more people learn to fly these machines safely. Expect flight zones and air lanes to be color-coded, geo-fenced, and managed via apps. The rest is up to inventors, policymakers, and time. One thing's for sure, the sky won't be the limit for much longer.